Smythe. Now, last year, the government stopped letting agents from charging tenants fees for things like credit checks and drawing up rental agreements. It's reduced the upfront cost of renting. Even so, most agents will ask for two or three months in rent upfront. Uh, and then there's the deposit, usually another grand. So you can imagine some renters have been delighted to see homes offered on a non-deposit basis or NDO. Um, Patricia Floyd rented a home in Stamford, Lincolnshire. She was prepared to pay a deposit, but she was told she'd have to sign up to an NDO instead, the O's for option, and uh, if she wanted to secure the flat. Well, I spoke to her earlier. The agent at the time said there was no way of doing a deposit. He said he'd spoken to the landlord, and the landlord, this is what he wanted to go with. So what did you think you were getting for the money that you were being asked to pay? He reeled off that I could have things like a free will. Um, there were some discounts from shops and several little things that were actually nothing, no use to me whatsoever. Now, you weren't paying a deposit, so how much were you being asked for in all? Six months' rent of 4,770, the membership fee of £288 and £300 for the six months NDO which would then be continuous after that. So really this was a discount membership scheme that you were being asked to pay money for? Yes. How did you discover that you shouldn't have done this? My son got in touch with me and said he'd read an article that said you should be given an option. And I realised that it was all wrong. I should have been given the option of paying just a straightforward deposit. When I found out about this, um, shouldn't have actually happened. I was able to contact the landlord. He then made an appointment to come and see me with his wife and um, they didn't realise this had actually happened. Um, they were horrified. So how much money do you feel that you ought to be getting back? I feel that I should have back the membership fee because I haven't used it and didn't want it, which was the £288, and the £300 that they've taken for the six months. At least. But you, you feel with the membership fee they owe you almost £600? Yes. Patricia Floyd. Well, Dan Wilson Strawson is from Generation Rent, that's a tenants pressure group. Uh, Franz Dua is CEO of Flat Fair, uh, an online platform that promotes non deposit options. Um, Franz, if I can start with you, sure. with a deposit, a tenant either gets it back or it's used to pay for damage, you know, a simple, straightforward arrangement. Why on earth would anyone sign up to an NDO, you know, never see the money again and still be full of, fully liable for damages? Yeah, thanks. Um, so, you know, I think for us at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's important that um, we offer tenants the choice. It's it's not a product, product that's um, suitable for everyone. Um, I obviously can only also speak for what we do. Um, um, she, Patricia is not a, not a tenant of ours. Um, no. Working with Flatfair is literally as easy as, you know, checking into a hotel. Um, you, you pay your membership fee, which is a one-off fee, very clear and transparent. You go to a very easy to understand sign-up process and then you use your debit or credit card basically as security and that's it. And then you pay at the end when you move out. It's literally simple as that. But why would you... What, I'm still not quite clear what you get for your money. I think it's, um, you know... You know, for example, I can talk about some of our tenants that we had in the past. We had one tenant who took a family on a cruise because obviously using uh, our option freed up a lot of the cash flow. Right. Um, other tenants putting their money into the savings account. It can be a nice cushion for bad days. So I think everybody's different, really. OK, let me go to Dan. It's true, isn't it, that deposits can be prohibitive. You know, it's a lot of money. You tie up a lot of money for a long time. There's got to be a better way. What's wrong with an NDO? Well, yeah, it's it's true. Uh, a lot of tenants who want to move uh, simply can't because they don't because they have a thousand pounds, but it's currently in the in an existing tenancy protection uh, deposit protection scheme, uh, and they need to find another thousand pounds for for a new tenancy before they get the the current money back. Um, so, in 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 those sorts of situations, you know, where where you don't have a, a, any savings and two thirds of renters don't have savings um, we need uh, we need a better system um, we've been campaigning for uh, p uh, deposits to be passported more easily between tenancies so um, 
so it's a it's a more of a seamless process once you've uh, once you've paid your last month's rent. Um, it's it's easier to to just have that money transferred to the new tenancy. Um, but we also need to find ways of. Uh, Helping tenants uh, who don't have who don't have money up front. But as, as to, Fran says, um, you know, people did get some benefit from this, and they did. They should have a choice. Uh, Patricia didn't, it appears, but they should have. Yeah, absolutely. And when I, when I look, for example, at the numbers, we had thousands of tenants um, who have already left our properties. You know, we have never had a single complaint with uh, with the ombudsman. But Franz, um, NDAs are basically a bet that you won't break anything in the home and uh, ease the pain of getting a lump sum together at the at the start of tenancy, aren't aren't they? They're a bet because if you do have trouble, that's what that thousand pound deposit protects you from. So we don't, um, so that might be specific for this product, but we don't do NDOs. Well, uh, the, no. tr the trouble with, the, uh, with, with, with this system is that uh, tenants being asked to pay more, uh, they, they don't get this money back and they're getting less protection because uh, a traditional deposit would be protected by a government approved uh, scheme which would, uh, would have a, uh, an approved dispute resolution process if there is a dispute and you don't get that with, uh, with, with these sorts of schemes and that, that's, a, that's a real risk and uh, tenants need to be aware of it. Franz, no final word? Do you, is that, isn't that a fair point? That no, that's, that's not correct. So we basically um, follow exactly the same rules. So we have partnered up um, with the same mediation um, providers that use the My Deposit scheme. So one of the three um, tenancy deposit schemes. So let's say at any point a landlord, a tenant can always uh, dispute the claim using one of the traditional schemes, and then they get a response um, very quickly uh, with the scheme deciding whether they actually hmm. have to pay or not. But it um, sounds so as if you have to be very careful who you choose um, to do it with, because yeah, absolutely. You know, it didn't so work for Patricia. I, yeah, absolutely, I agree. So it's a, it's a kind of newly evolving market. Um, we were one of the first ones. We have been running for more than three years. We we have raised a lot of capital, have worked with some okay. of the largest landlords in the country. Yeah. So it's okay. very important for tenants to make an educated choice of using a provider which is really well established. We we'll need to leave it there. I think we might come back to it at some point. Dan Wilson-Crawson and uh, uh, Franz Doer, thank you both very much indeed.